We are working very hard through the international pressure and through the internal pressure in order to have an outcome in Venezuela. We, we can have many different possibilities to have an outcome in Venezuela. We are calling for presidential election, free and clear presidential election without Maduro in power. We are making pressure in order to break and fracture the dictatorship so we have, may have a transition in Venezuela. We are calling for a international a, a common ground of different stakeholders in order to accomplish a solution in Venezuela. So we are open to any democratic solution in the case of Venezuela, which is a real, uh, more than a political, it's a human tragedy. As far as you know, Mr. Bojas, what is the position of uh, the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu to your position, to your so-called interim government? Well, we have a meeting yesterday with Prime Minister Netanyahu. He, he underlined the commitment with democracy in Venezuela. He underlined the commitment with the free world. And it's, it's very interesting to, to express to you and to inform to you that in Latin America, the other <laughs> part of the world, we, we are facing the same situation in which we are uh, fighting against a government, in this case, Maduro dictatorship, that is promoting terrorism in the region. So we have a global cause, which is how to overcome terrorism, how to overcome anti-Semitism, how to overcome anti-Western values. I understand that in Latin America, you know, there are many, many changes, uh, to put it mildly. How do you see uh, the situation in the subcontinent? We have dictatorships. This is the case of Cuba, for example, the case of Nicaragua, and the case of Venezuela, my country. And it's a real pity because they are creating a humanitarian crisis. In the case of Venezuela, almost five million people are abroad. This year, we can reach a number of eight million people. That would be the most uh, numerous crisis in the world. And this due to uh, uh, poverty, a humanitarian human rights crisis, a crisis, non-democracy, and this is spreading all over Latin America the same uh, cause in order to overcome and to overthrow democracies in these uh, uh, regimes, Nicaragua, Cuba, and Venezuela, who are working together, promoting uh, army groups, uh, promoting narco-traffic, promoting links with uh, radical groups like Hezbollah, and creating a, a, a terrible situation in all over Latin America. One of the truly bad places in the world today, and there are some other pretty bad places, but it's not acceptable to us, and it's not acceptable to many of the surrounding countries. Uh, many of those countries, including Colombia, are taking in refugees who are literally starving. The United States have been very close to our cause in Venezuela. President Trump has been pushing very hard not only in Venezuela, but in Cuba case, in order to have democracy. And we really feel that we have to push harder in order to break the dictatorship that we are living. And, and I want to resume in a line what we are living in Venezuela. We are, we are living 30 years after the Berlin Wall. We are right now trying to, to, to read off the Berlin Wall in Latin America with the regime of Cuba and the regime of Venezuela and Nicaragua. In view of the tension in your country, in Venezuela, uh, do you fear that there will be an outbreak of civil war in your country? In view of the opposition, strong opposition in Venezuela? Well, if you have the opportunity to have a, a, free, a free answer, uh, to a free question to all Venezuelans, the answer would be that they want to change. So in the case of Venezuela, uh, I am being very honest, there is no two sides. It's a whole country, a whole people against one dictatorship, which is Maduro. So I don't see any, any risk for civil war in the case of Venezuela. What I see is the typical uh, totalitarian regime, like the Soviet Union, like uh, Cuba in the case of Latin America that is oppressing the Venezuelan people.
That's the reason millions of people are leaving Venezuela. So what I see is the daily violence from the regime. We have a lot of people in jail, a lot of people in exile. People from the army force has been tortured by, by Cuban officials that works in a Venezuela regime. So the real terror that we are living is not the threat of civil war, but the totalitarian uh, uh, oppression from the government. We're spending a lot of time and effort on Venezuela. A lot of time and effort. What is going on in Venezuela is not acceptable on a humanitarian basis, on any basis. So we're looking at that very, very strongly, yes. Mr. Borges, will you welcome American military intervention in Venezuela? We are trying to build a political solution, but we have to be aware that uh, in a final analysis, uh, any, any solution, even the use of force, can be allowed in Venezuela. We have resolution from the United Nations, the responsibility to protect, which allows in the case of humanitarian crisis like in Venezuela, to have this international intervention for peace, for restoring democracy. So we are open for this kind of action. The one who has choose the violent path has been Maduro, because what we want is a political solution. But we really believe that we have to be open to any solution, even the use of force in the case of Venezuela, because we are living a real tragedy. We are building or trying to build a political solution, but the one who has choose violence, who has choose oppression, has been Maduro himself. Assuming that Mr. Juan Guaido will be elected as leader of Venezuela, do you feel that your country will renew its relations with Israel? Absolutely, absolutely. The, the, the Jewish community in Venezuela has been quite important in historical and cultural terms. Do they support your position? Absolutely, absolutely. The, the Jewish community in Venezuela has suffered a, a lot of pressure from the regime. They live uh, in fear. Uh, they live under a lot of pressure. Unfortunately, more than a half of the Jewish community in Venezuela have left the country. We used to have around more than 20,000 uh, Jewish community. It was a quite important community, very tied with Venezuelan culture and history. More, more uh, than a half of the community have left to uh, Latin America, Florida, and the United States. But we want to rebuild our Venezuelan community, our, our Jewish Venezuelan community. Venezuela, yes? Are you aware of the support of your country at the UN uh, General Assembly in 47, 1947, when Venezuela was uh, one of the first countries which voted for the partition of the land of Israel. Yes, I'm, I'm proud of it. And also, before the war, Venezuela was open to receive a thousand of immigrants from, from Jewish communities all over the world. There is a famous uh, story about a ship that was full of Jews, and no, no country in Latin America wanted to receive uh, 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 that ship and Venezuela was open to receive that ship and more people from all over the world uh, at the beginning of the world. So we have had a very strong tradition to, to long and very strong ties with the Jew community in Venezuela and with Israel. I'm very proud about that relationship that we want to restore. I thank you very much, uh, Minister Borges. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank, thank you. you.